Time to shine today. Varsity squad, it is Scott Ferguson. And I got some home cooking here. A really good friend of mine from South Florida, Yelena Kuzmina, which I know I butchered the last name because in Russian it's said a different way, but I'm just going to call her Yelena because she's my beautiful friend here in South Florida. She helps others level up. She has a really cool story um, kind of of coming over from overseas in Russia and you know, coming in the United States, learning the language and really leveling up. She's currently a licensed mental health therapist in, in here in South Florida. Uh, she's working for a local community agency for private practice, but she's also expanding her wings to start Yelena's coaching, which is, I, I'm so stoked for, I help her where I can. Um, she's a fellow coach of mine. She really is a driven woman. Um, and that's why me and her mesh like really good. So Yelena kind of come on to the time to shine today squad, introduce yourself, but what emoji do you use the most when you text? Hey, uh, so nice to be here. Thanks for having Yay. me. <laughs> yeah. Emoji. Yeah. I think it's pretty much a crying face, like a smiley, smiley crying, crying face. face. Yeah. It's and, uh, is and the, maybe thumbs up as well. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is, is the one where you're laughing, crying, is it straight up or is it sideways? No, it's straight up. Straight up one? <laughs> I, I just I do it straight up. <laughs> I, love, yeah. I love it. So what's your favorite color, Elena? Ah, that's kind of a tough question for me. Well, I'm wearing kind of red and black. Right. That's one of my favorite colors, but I like to change it up. I, I can't really come up with just that's my color and I am just committed to this. I, I like, I, you know, sometimes I feel like pink. Sometimes I feel like black. <laughs> you know, sometimes I feel like green. It, it really depends. Yeah. All of them are in your color wheel. They all look great on you. But I kind of look at Thanks. you kind of like a, a red you know, but also with a nice cool blue streak as well, because you're very driven, but you're also a great listener and, and a great communicator. So I, I love those two colors for you. So tell us about your origins. Let's go back to when you're a child kind of growing up and was it the Soviet Union then or was it Russia yet? What, what's well, yeah, I was born in an 80s. So it was okay. a Soviet Union okay. at that time. And uh, when I was about 10, then it kind of came all crashing to the end. And I was pretty not fun times for okay. anyone. So it's it. So I'm kind of a child of both. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. What what made you come to the states? Then how did that work out? The process of you coming to the United States? Because you and I are friends. Yeah. I never asked you this before. <laughs> you know, we've talked a little bit about like you working mm -hmm. in the ice cream shops and stuff here <laughs> in, in South Florida. You know, while you're learning the language and getting your start here. But what was the journey like? coming mm -hmm. from the former Soviet Union and Russia to the United States. And how did that happen? That is a good question. I kind of don't even know how many years later, how did it happen? I, when I was, I know, such a funny story. Like I need an hour to say the whole story. <laughs> Let, let's condense it down in just a couple minutes a little of bit. Course, of course, of course. Yeah, so I was, I was, I was actually um, going to my in English major in Russia. Okay. So that's kind of gave me a good platform and a start to speak English in a certain level. Mm -hmm. And then there was a program that it was cool to go to America and just as a student mm -hmm. and just make some money and come back or, you know, travel. So I kind of jump on that as few of my uh, friends mm -hmm. and but, yeah. And then a couple of months later, like I landed in the U.S., knowing nobody pretty right. much um right. just kind of having a couple of not even close friends with me mm -hmm. and yeah it was just we just took it from there was it hard to get into that program elena like or was it did they take anybody was it hard did you have to qualify somehow if you remember to get into that program it was come? not hard it was pretty much like a not a student exchange but it was just an opportunity for a student who speaks English ah. to go and visit and work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, another country. And it was not necessarily America, but it just, I chose the U S it was kind of the furthest. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. And, and what, yeah. what, you, what, how many degrees do you have? <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's kind of complicated because I have a degree that's equivalent master's degree in Russia, mm -hmm. which was a program at that time of five years straight. 
So when I came to the US and I decided to get education in the US, it just felt right to me. Mm -hmm. They gave me bachelor's. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so the schooling you did in Russia, they started you off with a bachelor's so you could work towards a master's degree here? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I got bachelor's of science as pretty much based on my diploma and my classes over there. And then that's how I decided to choose to go and get a master's degree over here in psychology. Gotcha. So what did your family think about you staying mm -hmm. in the United States and not really going back to Russia? It was really tough on them and on me. Uh, we were not able to see each other for years because paperwork was such a drag. It was taking a long time. Mm -hmm. And my mom was really, it was hard on her. It was hard on her. Plus, we didn't even have Skype back then. Right. I, I came in 03. Say, no technology, right? Yeah. And you it was writing just... letters or making phone calls, right? <laughs> I, actually, phone calls, but they cost a fortune. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. You know, and me is coming up as a student who is making $6 an hour cash, which is a lot of money for me at that time. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, I just work an hour and talk for a few minutes with my parents. Okay. Um, and that was the only mo pretty much communication that I had over the phone. Okay. Yeah. Do you get to see him a little bit more now? Oh, yeah. I, I, I go up there every other year. I've been there. That, that's actually two years ago, the last time. And now yeah. I'm not sure of the next time because of the situation that we have sure, going on. The pandemic. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how you kind of parlayed into, uh, you know, a mental health therapist and into your coaching. How did that all come about? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I I was, uh, I graduated about what, seven, eight years ago and been doing therapy in the agencies and mm -hmm. working with, you know, for children to adults and couples and teenagers. But I kind of wanted to bring something else to okay. them. And I started diving into self-development and then coaching came along and and it's awesome. I love it. I love it. It feels like I'm bringing a different level of therapy that's kind of incorporated with coaching if uh, if that's what works for the client. Now, I love it because, you know, therapy, a lot of the therapists, and correct me if I'm wrong, they, they dig in, into their past where coaching like myself, I learn about their past, but I really pull them forward. So you live kind of the best of both worlds, right? You have that profession and that mindset, correct? Yeah, and that's kind of what I love about it because, yes, with my clients, with my coaching clients, we can dig in the past. If mm -hmm. it works for you, I'm okay with that. Right. Because, right. you know, I'm here for you and to help you in the best of abilities that I have. And we, we spend a few sessions in the past and take care of that so we can actually build the present and future. Because mm -hmm. some people are not able to move on their past mm. and they are not able to be the best version of themselves because whatever happened or the way they're actually looking at it. Cause they're kind of stuck there in their mind. Exactly. Right? And you're mm -hmm. able to, with your expertise, pull them forward. So Yelena, what do you think makes a great coach? What makes a great coach first? I want to start over the relationship okay. with my client, because if we don't have good relationship, good, safe relationship, that coaching will be challenging. Okay. You need to have a connection and make a flying client feeling safe. And at the same time, client needs to be there to help themselves. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I, if you're not ready to help yourself, then there's that much I can do. Love that. So you don't really bring them in and tell them what to do. You kind of guide them and they kind of make their decisions, right? On their yeah, own, absolutely. if they're willing yeah. to be helped, correct? Exactly. Absolutely. I'm not there to tell you what to do. I can point out to some things that I see that can be worked on, but sure. it's ultimately up to you because it's all about you. Gotcha. You know, yeah. So if what is your kind of secret sauce, if you will, when you're starting to work with a client mm -hmm. to help them find their blind spots? Well, first, I think it's like I said, I want to start with relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is perception is the key. Mm -hmm. Perception and facts, perception and behaviors, perception on yourself and how you see yourself is the key for me 
to be a good coach and point out to who you truly are. I want to make my client be the best version of themselves. Love that. I love it. I love it. So when you're starting to work with a new client, um, or maybe even you're just in the discovery process to make sure it's a yeah. good relationship fit. Is there any good question that you wish they would ask you, but never do? How can I help myself? Love it. Love it. Or like, even what do you expect of me almost? Right. Because like, that's with my coaches. When I first start off, I ask them, what are you expecting from me? as you know, you give me, you impart mm -hmm. on me your wisdom. I love it. I love that you said that because they have to be willing to help themselves, right? Exactly. Not, and that's, yeah. that's kind of my key point. If you're not willing to make any progress, to take any imperfect actions, if you are willing to give me a hundred million excuses, then we're not going to make the progress. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Like imperfect mm -hmm. action. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So if I'm out at a networking event, you know, pressing some flesh, meeting people, how I know it, listening to what they have to say mm. that I'm people that I'm talking to, how would it, I know if they were, what are they saying to me to make them a good contact connection referral to Elena? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, they want to make a change. They okay. maybe feel stuck. They want to do something else. They feel like they want to do something. Maybe they don't know how, maybe they don't know where, but if you feel stuck and you believe that you can do better or you can do more, be a better version of yourself, maybe for yourself, maybe for your kids, maybe for your loved ones, whatever your reasons are, if you're ready to do it, then I'm here for you. Love it. I love it. And that's, that's so if you're stuck and you, you know that there's a better version of yourself, you mm -hmm. just don't know how to unleash that. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah. A, mm -hmm. You know, squad, get a hold of me and I can definitely put you personally in touch with Elaine. I have, you know, I'm blessed to be able to grab coffee with Elaine about yeah. once a month and kind of talk and bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. So Elaine, I'm curious, what, what keeps you up at night? How many people can I help that okay. make that able to receive my help and see me as a as a guide as a guide okay yeah as a guide as somebody who is there for them mm -hmm. as well yeah love it and so what do you think people misunderstand about you the most <laughs> yeah fun question um it can be a couple of things it can be maybe some of the cultural things of the russian or soviet mm -hmm. union behaviors but i think sometimes i tend to when it's tough situation, I tend to not really show much feelings. It doesn't mean I don't care. It means I'm in business. We need to do it. We need to take care of that. And then it kind of comes down. It's like, oh, okay, I'm ready to have my moment now. It's actually, <laughs> I don't think you can connect with that because it, it's kind of pretty much like a veteran, you know, like you go, you're in the army, right? Maybe. And right. you're mm -hmm. going through that tough stretch of time that you need to be focused. You, you don't really care you don't really there you're not there to show your feelings and be all soft softy because there is not time and place for that sure. at that moment so when the veteran comes home and you know have the symptoms of ptsd it's because they're ready to feel and they're not numb anymore right so right. it's pretty much i think similar to that like if i need to focus and do something i may be a little cold <laughs> or right look a little tough but right. it doesn't mean i don't care it means right. i need to get things done i even know that personally because i thought you were mad about something before <laughs> like scott i'm not mad i'm just focused so i understand yeah. I, love that. I love that so yelena who has had the most profound impact on your life who probably my parents and my friends my mom is a professional athlete mm -hmm. so i tend to travel a lot with her mm -hmm. and that gave me such a base of being true of what I'm capable of mm -hmm. in a pretty tough situations. And wow. I get to know other people, not through, when you have perfect conditions, you're not gonna know a person. You're not gonna grow either. Exactly. You know? yeah. And 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 that, that what makes, I guess, the impact is so important of the way I was growing up. It, I grew up, it was pretty tough. 
sure. and that made me more resilient to tough situation and i know i can just make it pretty much out of anywhere anything. right anything yeah, <laughs> yeah so <laughs> i'll figure it out your mom's competitive spirit you know being yeah. a competitor because she competed at a high level what was that sport again you told me before o orienteering orienteering okay so yeah. your mom was a high level orienteer interior mm -hmm. um do you think a lot of that competition rubbed off on you to build that resiliency or did you kind of like push back on that because when you're around a competitive person it either you can resent it or you can embrace it what do you think you did more of i don't even think i'm a competitive person actually no you know no okay. i i don't maybe you see me <laughs> I like know that you. <laughs> right yeah i i it, it's i'm not really a big competitive person mm -hmm. and i don't think my mom was as well maybe as an athlete you sure. have to but when i was growing up already uh, my mom was not competing on the level mm -hmm. of like on that high level in gotcha. her you know late 20s early 30s gotcha so, so i don't see myself necessarily as a competitive person for some reason no. yeah okay so is there any when you first came to the States, yeah. I asked this to a lot of the people that kind of immigrated here. Um, was there a movie that really stands out that you remember watching when you got here that stands out to this day that maybe taught you a little bit as you went along about life? Oh, the movie. I, okay, I'm going to say the movie that did not teach me about life, mm -hmm. but I love it. Okay. <laughs> it it no, just please. stands out. Kill Bill. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love I it. I love it. There is something Thurman, about, right? yeah, oh, exactly. There is something about it. A little it. like her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, she's and awesome. Matrix. The, okay, yeah, that's a, that, that's a great movie. Take that the red is. Pill. I actually should have worn my Take the Red Pill T-shirt today for you. That, that's awesome. absolutely Red Pill. <laughs> yes. So let's go back to the twenty-two-year-old Yelena. Mm -hmm with you know i mean i know your age i'll never say it but she squad if you're watching on youtube or any other broadcasting channel she's a beautiful woman she does not look i know her age she doesn't look near it but let's go back to the 22 year old yelena what kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on her to help her level up last through and maybe shorten that learning curve just a little bit yeah just continue to believe that everything is going to work out and be open-minded to meet other people who will level you up. There you go. I love it. That's how I met you. Yeah, you know, and I met you. With, with full, full disclosure, Yelena was a client of mine, a real estate client. And we just were talking, <laughs> walking through a, a house one time. And she's like, I'm a coach. And I'm like, oh, really? So that's how we built our business relationship and our friendship out of it. I yep. love that. I love it. So how do you want, you, you listen to my podcast. So how, how yeah. do you, and thank you for doing that. Um, mm -hmm. How do you want your dash remembered? That little line that's in between your mm -hmm. life date and death date. How do you want to be remembered? Yeah, I want to be remembered for who I am, which is authentic and loving, given person who just wants to make a difference in other people's life Love and bring it. their better version of themselves. Yeah. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you for saying that. So, Yelena, what is a, your definition of a life well lived then? Be true to yourself. Okay. That will attract people who is truly attracted to you in a friendship, a personal relationship, in a professional relationship. But if you're not true to yourself, to your personality, then you will attract people who are not necessarily benefiting you in that way. I bet. Yeah. So it's what mm -hmm. you kind of put your mind to is what you attract, right? You know, so you, yep. you're true and authentic. You'll attract more true and authentic people. I love that. Absolutely. So, Yelena, let's let's move into our leveling up lightning round. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, you got five seconds on each one of these questions. You and I have talked about or could talk about each one of these questions for hours, but you got yeah. five seconds, no explanations. You ready? Let's do it. All right, let's level up. What is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Taking perfect actions. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Get some sun, go outdoors, bike rides, walk, uh, trail, anything Love outdoors. And, and Yelena is not just saying that. If you go to her, which they'll all be in the show notes, her Facebook page or her Instagram, you can see her outdoors taking pictures on the beach with our sure. version of paradise. I love that. So mm -hmm. 
other than your own website or of course time to shine today.com my shameless plug here but yeah. what website do you go to to kind of really level up and, and take your life to the next level to really kind of dig into okay it looks like i've been spending some time with click funnels recently sure yeah that awesome. will be the yeah. one and i don't know facebook and amazon there you go there you go they, they all level up i yeah. just usually, when i'm asked that question i just say google because it's a website and i can use it right, for anything, yeah. right? <laughs> so not the book you're reading now or not the flavor of the month give me that book that if i'm just not feeling it i'm feeling a little down you're like fergie here read this book well actually i just studying diving into that self-development and reading. Mm -hmm. So besides going and through my master's and pretty much reading the book in the curriculum, mm -hmm. I, I'm more like a person who is not a big reader in the book, but mm -hmm. I would listen and make a research and uh, okay. certain topics. Sure. So if you have that book, then if I feel down, then I would be appreciate, appreciate if you can give one to me. Oh, well, I got I, a bunch of them. I, you have my whole I'm sure you do. I'm right now. Yeah. So if you could stay one age for the rest of your life physically and mm -hmm. still have the knowledge you have now, and continue to learn physically, what age would you stay? 25. There you go. That's perfect. Thank you for the honest answer. A lot of people will say, well, I love my age now. It's bullshit. You know, I know. <laughs> like yep. I would love to be 32 again. That was just like the perfect physical okay. age where I was still able to move around. I was more of a man than a young man and not an older guy like I am mm -hmm. now. But uh, all right. So is there any charity or organizations you like to give your time or money to? Well, I am actually working for community agency and it feels oh, yeah. like yeah, I am providing pretty much for them. It's free service mm -hmm. of, awesome. you know, coaching and therapy. So I'm giving to the community. Yeah. Gotcha. So when you came to the United States, yeah. what was your favorite band when you got here? The United <gasps> States band. Mm. Okay. Red Hot Chili Peppers. There you Is go. That... I love you. There you go. <laughs> Give it I'll away, give those. it away, give it away now. Oh, I love yeah. That. I love oh, it. Yeah. I love it. So, Yelena, how can we find you? Well, you can check out my Facebook, uh, uh, Yelena Kuzmina, and find me up there. You can send me the email, yelenakcoach at gmail.com. Love it. And, you know, yeah, the and the website, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, yelenakcoaching.com. Com. Love it. Yeah, and all of those cool. will be in our show notes squad. So make sure that you check out Yelena there. And if you want a mm -hmm. personal introduction, I'd be happy to make it for you. So Yelena, what is, leave us with one last knowledge nugget you want us to take with us, internalize mm -hmm. and take action on. Be yourself and true to what you value. Do Love not it. adapt other people values because they want you to be Love true it. to yourself and nothing Love that's it. yeah yeah Awesome. I love that. And squad, you've just had basically a free masterclass with my <laughs> really good, beautiful, awesome friend, Yelena, you know, that she'll tell you that a good coach really develops relationships and connections. She wants her clients to feel safe and to be able to want to help themselves. You know, he, if you're asking yourself, how can I help myself? And you really, really want to take imperfect action and make it happen, get a hold of me. I will make a personal introduction to Yelena. And if you know, if you feel stuck and you know there's a better version of yourself to bring out that genius, again, let me put you in touch with Yelena. You know, mm -hmm. Yelena's mom's spirit of competition and whatnot helped Yelena really, you know, with her traveling with her, she got to explore and, and take in new places at the same time see the side of her mom that was a mom but also the side of her mom that was a competitor so she got to see best of both worlds with that which she's really parlayed that into the person that she is now you know she wants you to be open-minded and believe be an authentic and loving person make sure you be true to yourself because when you are, you will attract others that are true to yourself. And that way you're starting to build a squad like you listeners that are always continuing to level up. And then adapt 
to your values. Your, make sure your values are strong. Your morals are good. Just like my really good friend, Yelena, and, you know, she levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's such a go-giver. She's a really good friend of mine in South Florida. I'm blessed to know her. And thank you so, so much for coming on, Yelena. I look forward to doing some collaborations with you here in the near future. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. I love You're it. You're welcome. Talk <laughs> soon.